Hello hi everyone, welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. So I get it, you've done your best, tried your hardest, prevailed through the trials of application, and your sunscreen just isn't working. Using a face sunscreen is one of those steps that can sometimes just you know, not really be that great. A lot of times it can feel like a chore. I cannot tell you how many conversations I've had with people detailing their skincare routine, where they talk about all the products they use, the cleansers, the treatments, the moisturizers. And then when I ask them about sunscreen, they reveal that they don't like wearing sunscreen because it's just not an enjoyable experience. It doesn't work for their face and it ruins the rest of their skincare routine. Trust, I have been there too many times. <laughs> sunscreen can sometimes be just one of those steps that yes, can be a battle. But not to fear, my friend. We're gonna talk about some of the reasons why your sunscreen just isn't working and how to fix those. Because there are so many different reasons and just in conversation with people, I have seen a lot of people fall for these mistakes because skincare can sometimes be complicated and a lot of brands don't really detail out how to apply a sunscreen, if it's right for your skin, what you may be doing wrong. So I hope some of these tips and tricks will be able to help you in navigating your own personal sunscreen journey. So let's get into it. As we get into this, I just wanna say first, I am so proud of you for wearing a sunscreen. That is such an important step of the skincare routine and a lot of people don't even try applying sunscreen. So the fact that you are makes me really, really proud of you and I am happy you are trying. And hopefully by the end of this video, we will fix all the different issues that may be contributing to why you're not liking your sunscreen experience. But the most important thing is that you are wearing one and I'm really, really glad you are. So the first reason why your sunscreen just isn't working is because you're applying it wrong. This is the most common mistake that I see when people are using a sunscreen because it can be really tricky trying to navigate how you're supposed to put on a sunscreen. And even when I've watched YouTube videos of people applying their sunscreen and having negative experiences, a lot of times I'm like, oh, it's just because you're applying it wrong. And I totally get it because for a long time I was actually applying my sunscreen wrong as well. And it made me dislike a lot of sunscreen formulas that actually weren't that bad. I was just applying it wrong the whole time. Sunscreen products can be one of the trickiest products to formulate because of how much protection it has to provide the skin, which means a lot of times that the texture and consistency of a lot of sunscreens are not very lightweight and tend to have heavier formulas. In addition to that a lot of sunscreens, particularly mineral sunscreens, can leave a white cast on the skin that's really unpleasant to deal with. But this one really simple trick will help to determine if you're just applying your sunscreen wrong or if your sunscreen just really isn't right for your skin. When you are applying a sunscreen, instead of directly applying it to your face, I always recommend warming it up in your hands. Warming up the formula between your fingertips will really help to make sure that it's ready to be evenly applied across your entire face and really, really help to minimize that white cast experience. And then after you warm it up between your fingertips, really take your time working it into your skin. A lot of sunscreens won't really look great on your skin if you don't take the time to really work it in. And sometimes this can take a little while and obviously you don't want to be rough on your skin. Make sure you're being gentle, but you want to really take the time to massage it into every area of your face as this will help to diffuse the white cast make it feel less heavy and overall improve the look of your skin. I've seen so many people online take, say, a mineral sunscreen, wipe it across their face, spend less than two seconds working it into every area of their face, and see an unpleasant look because of it. And unfortunately, for a lot of sunscreens, you just need to take the time to really work it into your skin. Make sure you're evenly massaging it into every area and really taking your time. Sometimes for me, this can take 30 seconds, it can take 45 seconds, it really just depends on the sunscreen, but you really wanna make sure you're warming it up on your skin, massaging it into every area, Area and making sure that it's really well applied into your skin. Like I said, this will help to really minimize white cast and has made a lot of sunscreens that I previously thought were just too heavy or had too much white cast for my skin actually really tolerable for my skin. If you spend that time working it into your skin, it'll give you a much better chance of figuring out if it's right for you or not. Now, of course, this trick may not work for you and you may still notice that there's an intense white cast, which is where I'd say this probably isn't the right sunscreen for you. And this can particularly happen when people of color or black people are using a mineral sunscreen on their face and they notice that a white cast is really persistent. Which brings me to my next point, whether you're using a chemical sunscreen or a mineral sunscreen. Now on my channel, I've always recommended mineral sunscreens. I just feel that they're best for the skin in terms of skin sensitivity, reducing the risk of irritation. I find that mineral filters are really, really good at protecting the skin from sun damage, but they're not necessarily always accessible to people of every skin tone. And I will admit, as far as sunscreens go, chemical sunscreens will almost always feel more luxurious and be a more pleasant experience. There is a huge debate online as to whether or not chemical or mineral sunscreens are better. And it's really, really complicated and there's a lot of mixed data. Like I said, I personally prefer and recommend mineral sunscreens on my channel, but say if you're someone who's a person of color,
color, you may benefit more from a chemical sunscreen. Now, if you do have a mineral sunscreen, I still recommend warming it up between your fingertips and really taking the time to work it into your skin, but there is a chance that you still will see a white cast. And in that case, it may be better to try a different type of mineral sunscreen or to move to chemical sunscreens if you really can't find anything. In general, people with dark skin tones will benefit more from using a chemical sunscreen than a mineral sunscreen. And that decision is totally up to you. There's a quote in the industry that I really like that says, the best type of sunscreen is the sunscreen you'll actually wear. And if you have a completely unpleasant experience using sunscreen, so much to the point that you don't even want to wear sunscreen, it's better that you choose a sunscreen that is better suited for your skin, like a chemical sunscreen, than to not wear a sunscreen at all. Now, of course, I still recommend mineral sunscreens. I still believe that they're better for the skin and all around provide really, really good protection. But if you are someone with a darker skin tone, there are plenty of other options available. And I will actually link YouTubers below who are people of color or black that have specific recommendations for darker skin tones of sunscreens that will work really well for your skin. Feel free to go watch and support them. Their videos are in the description box below. Now, the third reason I see a lot is that you're not investing into a good sunscreen. When it comes to formulation, sunscreen is the trickiest product to formulate and oftentimes very expensive because not only do the ingredients and the science required to create a really good formula very intensive, but these formulas also have to go through rigorous testing in order to make sure that they actually provide the level of protection that they say they do. And that costs a lot of money. And a lot of times when it comes to a good sunscreen, I find that my favorite sunscreens are a little bit more expensive than my standard products that I use. But this is one part of the routine that I will always splurge on and I recommend you do as well. I would much, much rather have you invest into a really, really good quality sunscreen and keep the rest of your routine really simple and affordable and to do vice versa because making sure that you're getting daily sun protection is the most important thing. And I would much rather you have a pleasant experience with the sunscreen that you're actually going to use every single day than to purchase a more affordable option that you're not really going to use. Now, is this the across the board rule? Absolutely not. But just what I've noticed in terms of my personal experimentation with sunscreen, typically the ones that are a little bit more expensive are the highest quality formulas and the ones that I find I actually use every single day. Now, of course, when it comes to any price point for a product, I always recommend that number one, you are responsible with how you spend your money. Please do not put yourself into financial risk just for a damn sunscreen. Because girl, it's not worth it. However, the great news is that there are a ton of really affordable cleansers, really affordable treatments, and really affordable moisturizers that you can substitute for your normal products in order to get a really good quality sunscreen. I've always said that if you just had to use one product in your routine, I recommend using a sunscreen. It really is that important. And like I said before, spend your money wisely. But if you are going to splurge on one item, I recommend that it be your sunscreen just because they're typically the most expensive to formulate. For example, a product I've been loving is the Dr. Dennis Gross Lightweight Wrinkle Defense SPF 30 sunscreen. This one has such a good formula. It's a mineral only sunscreen. It blends into the skin so nicely. It feels really lightweight and you can also see that <laughs> Oreo chewed up the cap a little bit. I guess she loves it as much as I do. <laughs> but this one is definitely more on the pricier side and if I were to see a cleanser or a moisturizer that's priced at this point, I would definitely heavily question the ingredients in the formula. But because this is such a good formula that works really well on the skin and is actually a sunscreen I want to use every single day, it's something I'm willing to splurge on. But you don't have to spend this much money on a product, for example. There are affordable sunscreens out there, like the Alba Botanical SPF 30 sunscreen. This one is good. This one will get you the protection. It'll do its job. Does it compare to the experience of this one? Not at all. And that's really where a lot of times the price point does differentiate the experience. But it doesn't mean that you have to miss out on a sunscreen. There are affordable options out there. Oh, by the way, all the products that I'm talking about in today's video will be linked in the description box below. If you do want to support me and my channel, they are affiliate links, but no pressure whatsoever. They're just there as a guide for you. If you want to use them, never, never, never any pressure. Another reason why your sunscreen may not be working is because your SPF rating is a little bit too high. Now, let me explain this one a little bit more. When it comes to mineral sunscreens, an SPF 50 formula is almost always going to be more unpleasant to use than an SPF 30 formula. A lot of times you are compromising the experience and it can turn people off to sunscreen altogether. For example, I remember recommending the CeraVe SPF 30 sunscreen a lot in my old videos. And a lot of people would see my videos and think that I was recommending the CeraVe SPF 50 sunscreen. There is a drastic difference between the two of them. And I've seen a lot of like sad, but really funny TikToks of people trying to apply the SPF 50 one and seeing how intense the white cast is. I'm talking it's like cake batter on the face, frosting on the face. Do, do I want sugar or something? There is such a huge difference between the experience of both of those formulas, so much so that I personally don't like using the CeraVe SPF 50 sunscreen. Sometimes I use it on my body, but I definitely don't enjoy using it on my face because of how intense the white cast is. However, I have enjoyed using the CeraVe SPF 30 sunscreen in the past. And I've seen a lot, unfortunately, when people use an SPF 50 sunscreen, they're like, oh my gosh, this experience is terrible. I definitely don't want to use a sunscreen. And they never end up using a sunscreen after that. Please 
please don't give up hope. Using an SPF 30 sunscreen when it comes to mineral sunscreens can oftentimes give you a more pleasant experience, be less intense of a white cast, and overall feel more lightweight on the skin. And transparently, it's really difficult for me to find an SPF 50 sunscreen that I actually really like. It can be difficult, but actually one that I really like, where is it? It is the Rovectin SPF 50 sunscreen. I love this one. This one was my go-to sunscreen for a while because of how lightweight it is on the skin and how unlike a lot of SPF 50 formulas it is. There's still a little bit of a white cast, which is why I have to work it into my skin. But overall, I'm really impressed with this formula as compared to a lot of SPF 50 mineral formulas because a lot of them I'm just like, oh boy. This is, this is really difficult. It just comes down to the difficulty of formulation. It's crazy difficult to formulate an SPF 50 mineral sunscreen that is going to be accessible by all people and doesn't have a really intense white cast. It just is what it is. So if you are struggling to use an SPF 50 sunscreen, try it on SPF 30. It might work for you. Another reason, and a lot of times this one is overlooked, but depending on how slowly you go through products, this may be an issue. Sunscreens do expire a lot faster than other formulas, so it's really important that you make sure you check the expiration date for every sunscreen, because if it's past that expiration date, you are compromising the health of your skin. And I say this because I have seen a lot of products be sold at discount stores that are way past the expiration date. And whereas with a cleanser, you may not see like a lot of irritation or sensitivity or problems, with a sunscreen, you do not want to mess around. Do not apply an expired sunscreen formula on your face. You are risking its actual effectiveness and could be seeing sun damage in your skin. And this is just good to do regardless. You always want to check the expiration date because say the product may not be expired when you actually buy it, but three, five months in to you using the product, it could already be expired. And I know that pain of realizing you have to throw out the rest of your sunscreen. <sighs> Come on, tears, where are you at? I need them for the theatrics, everyone's watching. It sucks, but that's why you wanna make sure you always check the expiration date. And then we come to the last two reasons, which I believe are the most important. And this may apply to you if you find that you are using your sunscreen, but it's not really properly protecting you from the sun, or you're still seeing sun damage, this will definitely apply to you. Your sunscreen might not be working because you're not reapplying it. I know that reapplying your sunscreen is one of those things that people are like, ugh. I totally get it. Reapplying your sunscreen is not the most enjoyable thing, but if you are going to be having consistent exposure to the sun throughout the day, it is really important that you reapply your sunscreen. And specifically, if you're in direct sunlight, you need to be reapplying your sunscreen every two hours. If it goes past that two hour mark of being in direct sunlight, the sunscreen really isn't going to be very effective and you could see some sun damage. So you wanna make sure that you're reapplying it. And yes, before you ask, you should be applying your sunscreen even if you are indoors all day because of window light and natural sun exposure that we get. Although you don't need to reapply it as frequently if you aren't in direct sunlight. Now for me, I'll be honest, in the past, this has always been the biggest difficulty because once my face is, you know, ready and I'm out and about, I really don't want to reapply sunscreen. But I did find two that I love reapplying to my skin and I've always had a really pleasant experiences with. The first being the sunscreen that I will not shut up about. I love it. It's, it's my favorite sunscreen. I've used it for the longest every single day, multiple times a day. The Bliss Blockstar SPF 30. I reapply this to my skin easily at least three times a day. I love this one because it's so lightweight, even for my oily ass skin, that when I reapply it, I don't notice that my skin feels really heavy. My skin doesn't get greasy or oily. It has this mattifying effect that works really well if you are someone who struggles with more oily skin. And it has a corrective tint that helps to offset the white cast. I'm, I'm just in love with with this one, it is my favorite to reapply. And it works really well. The other day I went to the beach and I realized that I forgot my sunscreen at home. I was still in the shade, but I was still outside. And I forgot to apply body sunscreen. I know, I know. <laughs> I sinned too. And I got a mad tan line and I noticed that I hadn't applied sunscreen to this specific part of my face. And I legit noticed a harsh line of where I had applied this sunscreen once in the morning versus where I hadn't applied it, which shows how effective this sunscreen is. But had I been able to reapply it, I wouldn't have seen that line at all. So you wanna make sure that you're reapplying your sunscreen. Another one that I actually like to reapply is the Sunbum Mineral SPF 30 Tinted Sunscreen. Similar to the Sunbum one, this does have a tint to offset the white cast. This has more of like a slip kind of nice feel to the skin and I do enjoy reapplying this one. Not quite as much as the Bliss one, but I do use this one pretty frequently and never notice any issues when I do reapply it because of the texture and consistency. It does feel a little bit heavier than the Bliss one, but still I really enjoy using it and this one is at a great price point and you can find it at a lot of drugstore locations. A really, really good one to use. And then the final reason that your sunscreen just isn't working is because you're not practicing sun avoidance. Now this is something that I personally work to balance and always try to be mindful of and I 
recommend you're mindful of it too. Just applying sunscreen on its own is not the entire picture when it comes to sun protection. The best thing you can do is to minimize your exposure to the sun. Now, this isn't possible for everyone. There's a lot of people who have to work outside. I grew up on a ranch doing outside work. I used to work as a server where I was outside a lot. So this will depend on the person, but overall it's best to make sure that you're trying to avoid the sun where possible. Staying in the shade, wearing hats, wearing sunglasses are great ways of ensuring that you have some sort of physical protection beyond sunscreen alone to protect yourself from sun damage. Because sunscreen can only do so much. Now I do not support shaming people for spending a lot of time outside in the sun because we all have different lives and we all want to live our lives enjoying them and even I love going out to the beach for a while, spending a few hours in the sun, swimming, going on hikes. I personally think that's healthy for your mind, for your soul, but being mindful of how much exposure you're having to the sun is important in addition to wearing a sunscreen because wearing a sunscreen on its own does not mean that you can spend an extra few hours in the sun and not get any sun damage. You want to just make sure that you're being mindful and you're taking steps to protect yourself. Now I will admit I am not someone who likes hats. I don't look good in them. I've never pulled them off. I've struggled to wear hats, but I've recently started to be a lot more strict about how often I'm wearing sunglasses to prevent that sun damage around the eyes and even say when I go to the beach as opposed to sitting out in the middle of the sun, I choose to sit under a tree where there's shade. Or say if I'm going on a hike, I'll choose to walk in the shaded area as opposed to in the direct sun. It's little changes like that that'll help to minimize your sun exposure while still making sure that you're getting the great experiences of being outside and enjoying your life. Just practicing mindfulness is key. And those are all the reasons why your sunscreen just may not be working. Now, if you have tried all these specific reasons, none of them are working, your sunscreen still just isn't good for your skin, I recommend changing it up. Try a different sunscreen, try out a new formula, find someone who has similar skin to use and ask them what they use. You may want to give another product a shot, but I recommend going through this entire list and seeing if you are struggling with any of these things and giving your current sunscreen that you are using a chance. Because who knows, it may be a great sunscreen for your skin, you just might be making one of these mistakes. And it's totally fine that you've made these mistakes. I've made them. I even still make some of them. But again, mindfulness and putting your health first is the most important thing that you can do. Do you guys have any additional recommendations or suggestions? Please let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear them and see what you guys have. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. And I will see you guys in the next one. Mwah.